Happy fall, everyone. I have a new book. It's called The Little Ghost Who Was a Quilt. And it's written by, it could be Rael Nason, Nason, Real Nason. Oh, I'm sorry if I'm butchering that. And illustrated by Byron Egenschweiler. And the publisher is Tundra Books who is a Penguin Random House, it's a Penguin Random House company, and I'm reading it with their permission. So here we go. Here we go. There we go. The Little Ghost Who Was a Quilt. For Tess and Eli, that's the author, and for my mom who is afraid of ghosts. That's the illustrator. Once there was a little ghost who was a quilt. There he is, a quilt. I think the reason I chose this book is because I love quilts. I love the math that's required to make a quilt. I love the way it looks. And look at that beautiful quilt on him. So no white sheet here, just the quilt. Looks like an attic. Looks like there's a light bulb missing in that light. Spider webs. He didn't know why he was a quilt. His mom and dad and all of his friends were sheets. They were light as air. They flew high and fast and twirled and whirled in the sky. They could even ride on a gust of wind and then whoosh back to the ground like they were going down an invisible slide. That is the big difference between a quilt and a sheet. Sheets are very light. Quilts are very heavy. I wonder if that's going to be part of the problem. The little ghost who was a quilt was heavy because of his layers of fabric. It was hard for him to lift off and he was a slow flyer. He got hot and sweaty and when he tried to go faster, I'm sorry, he got hot and sweaty when he tried to go faster. The only time he attempted to twirl and whirl, it didn't end well. Oh, poor thing. <laughs> if this is what he's supposed to do, it's his job in life and he can't do it. Oh, how frustrating that must be. Here's the owl looking at him. I wonder if the owl feels badly for him. Dry leaves. And then there's the little ghost. One day he and his friends were at the park when they heard someone coming. His friends zoomed away because ghosts are terrified of people but the little ghost couldn't escape quickly enough. He flopped over a bench. Oh, that was pretty clever. He couldn't escape, so he just flopped over. He made himself look just like a blanket. A family came along and a little boy who was eating an ice cream cone sat beside him. The little ghost had never been so close to a human before and he felt fear in every fiber of his fabric. The boy only stayed a few minutes, but he dropped a big blob of melted ice cream right on the little ghost's face. Uh-oh. So remember, he's, what did they say? Terrified of people. So he's lying there being terrified of these people. And then there's the ice cream melting, and look who's watching behind. Later, when some other ghosts saw him, they laughed at the stain on his forehead. The little ghost was embarrassed and also very sticky. It's all the sugar that makes it so sticky and the milk and all that stuff. Oh, but poor thing, he has a blemish on him now and it's from the ice cream. The little ghost didn't like being different. His mom told him he had an ancestor who was a checkerboard, a checkered tablecloth and his great grandmother was an elegant lace curtain Everyone said she was the most beautiful ghost they'd ever seen. Even knowing that, the little ghost didn't feel any better. Oh my goodness, look at him. He looks so sad <laughs> with his head on the piano. Oh. He wished he was just one fabric and not a whole bunch of squares sewn together. The other ghost called him Scrappy, and he didn't like that. That's what makes quilt so beautiful is that you can use little scraps from different projects and add them to other scraps and it looks so beautiful. Maybe he'll come to know that by the end of the book. 
But there was one day that always cheered him up, Halloween. Oh, all the children at my school are so excited about Halloween and I still don't know what I'm gonna dress up as. People seemed excited about ghosts on Halloween and sometimes children dressed as them to trick or treat. Every year the ghosts went to watch the festivities. They stayed silent and still in the trees and pretended to be decorations far away from any humans. So clever. Look at them up there. They look like decorations to me. But according to this, they're real ghosts. And you can tell those are people, right? Because of the eyes and the feet and the hands. Too heavy to hover, the little ghost who was a quilt usually draped himself over a clothesline. He never had a very good view. This year he had a better plan. He remembered how close he had been to the boy at the beach, <laughs> to the boy at the park. So he decided he would be brave and fold himself over a chair on a porch right in the center of the action. How smart is that? So you know how sometimes you go up to a person's house, if you live in an apartment, I guess you don't do that. But if you live in houses, you go up to someone's house and sometimes there's a chair on the porch. Sometimes there's jack-o'-lanterns and plants. So he's finding a chair and he's gonna drape himself over it and they'll never know it's a ghost. Scout. Halloween night came and the little ghost flew as fast as he could, but he was only halfway across, across a lawn when he heard people coming. At last possible second, at the last possible second, he flopped over the porch rail. He was going for this, but he only made it to this. So there he was. Run, 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 run. I can't make it, I'll stop right here. A mom walked up the driveway with a little girl dressed as a ballerina. While the girl trick-or-treated, the mother asked the man at the door something. So she's saying, trick-or-treat. The mom is gonna ask the gentleman something. And there's the ghost. Uh-oh, his eyes are on the wrong side. Should he have flopped over the other way? The next thing the little ghost knew, the mom had picked him up. He was so scared he thought his seams might come unstitched. <gasps> I hadn't thought about that. Oh, and look what, oh, look what he, the mama did. <laughs> oh, I like the story. The mom wrapped the little ghost around the girl and put them both in a wagon. The girl had been cold and now the little ghost was keeping her warm. <gasps> he could hardly believe what was happening. Oh my goodness. So when the mom asked, I'll bet you the mom asked the gentleman if they could borrow the quilt. And the man, the gentleman probably said, well, it's not my quilt, you can have it. And it's thick, so it's work, per, working perfectly to keep the girl warm. They headed down the street past his friends in their tree. No, don't go, one whispered. What are you doing? The ghost so worried about him. The little ghost decided to fly away as soon as the girl got out of the wagon to trick or treat again. But the mom didn't turn into the next yard or the one after that. By the time she finally walked up to a house, the little ghost was panicking. How would he get away? I wonder if they're done, if they're going home. Why didn't she stop? Oh my goodness. The mother parked the wagon and carried the girl and the little ghost into the house. The little ghost didn't know what to do. He reminded himself to stay calm and be brave. He's very brave. The little ghost peeked around the room. There were hollowing decorations everywhere. He even saw a branch trimmed with a lollipop ghost. Where's that? A branch trimmed a lollipop with lollipop ghosts is the oh I see branch I see branches are those lollipops they just look they look just like his friends in the tree maybe that'll help him feel not so scared the girl oh this is my favorite part the girl well of real Halloween is dumping out the candy and sorting it the girl tucked the little ghost who was a quilt under her legs as she sorted her candies into piles. 
he felt surprisingly cozy. Maybe things would turn out okay after all. He must feel the love from the little girl. The girl ate a chocolate bar. That's what I would eat first. And when she wiped away her sticky little fingers on the little ghost, he didn't even mind. Oh. <laughs> I think he's liking this. After the little girl was asleep upstairs, her mom gently folded the little ghost quilt, the little ghost who was a quilt. She smiled and admired his fabrics and traced her finger along a line of his stitching. It tickled. Oh, I hadn't thought about that. Of course it's gonna tickle. Oh, this is so sweet. She set the little ghost on the couch and went upstairs too. When she was gone, he flew into the fireplace and out the chimney. His smile was three squares wide. <laughs> so it wasn't just one square, it was three squares wide. But he's leaving. I thought for sure he was gonna stay. But he has friends to go back to. The little ghost's friends cheered and rushed over to him. They were amazed by his courage and wanted to hear every detail of his adventure. They flew slowly along with him all the way home. Who is the big guy now, huh? It's him. No one's gonna make fun of him anymore because he's been so brave. And he actually touched a human. Oh my goodness. The little ghost was so happy that he felt like he was floating without even trying. Everything that had happened was because he was a little bit different. Oh, that's important. Everything had happened because he was a quilt. Oh, that's awesome. Now, I don't know about you, but I like being different. I would try and make myself a little bit different from everybody else. And look what it did for him. So instead of trying to always be the same as your friends, maybe something little can be different. And I believe this is the end. Yes, and there's the quilt. And there's the stitching that she was putting her fingers over. She was running her fingers over the dotted lines, the stitching, and that tickled him. The end. So remember, be different and happy Halloween. I hope you enjoyed the story. I sure did. Thanks for joining me. Until next time.